Greetings War Thunderers, this is Longshot with another Analyze This video, and this one features the P-51D20 in Arcade. If you're not familiar with this series, it's where I analyze replays sent to me by viewers in order to help us all learn and improve our flying. This particular footage was recorded on a PS4 by Coley66 and covers two arcade battles. Unfortunately for me, Coley is old school and uses the Imperial system, whereas I was brought up with Metric. For the benefit of viewers who, like me, think in metres instead of feet, I'll do my best to convert the measurements throughout the video. It might be helpful to keep in mind that 2,400 feet is 800 metres, which is approximately the distance at which the lead indicator appears. OK, so to start off with, Coley's climbed fairly high, up to an altitude of around 5,500 metres and appears to have an altitude supremacy over the enemy team. A Kai-61 has approached to within 2 kilometres and is helicoptering up, so let's see how Coley deals with him up into a climb with Wep, watching the target as he loses his speed and then rolling his plane over into a dive. The Kai-61 recovers enough speed to start a horizontal turn which is a particularly bad move as it takes him right across Coley's guns. He opens up from long range, has difficulty holding the aim steady which is a problem caused by a combination of the P-51's excessive recoil and the PS4's clumsy controller. But the Kai-61's are light, and as they aren't known for extinguishing fires, that should be enough to get the kill. That was an excellent start, and I can't see anything to fault in Coley's approach there. A simple and straightforward rope -a dope with no complicated manoeuvres. OK, so moving along. That Spitfire is a bit over 4km behind him and dropping back, and the Lar-5 is a bit lower and too far away to be a concern at the moment. In the other direction, a Foggerwolf 190A5 is 3km away and closing in. Coley's climbed back to 6,000 metres, levelled off, and his airspeed's fairly high at around 300 kilometres an hour, so hopefully that's enough to pull off another rope -dope. He keeps well clear of the 190, going vertical to maintain separation, and I don't blame him as he has to keep his Mustang out of the reach of those cannon. Nearing stall speed, so he has to hammerhead the plane. The 190 stalled out 1.3 kilometres beneath him, but has also flipped over into a dive, and is going to prove a very difficult target to hit. Coley chases him nevertheless, and opens fire when the lead indicator appears, hoping for a lucky hit to set the 190 alight. The 190 goes into a typical rolling, evasive pattern, which makes it an impossible target, and Coley decides it's time to break off the attack. He doesn't zoom climb, instead he's extending away at high speed, and you can see why. The Spitfire had closed uh, within 4 kilometres and now has an altitude advantage and the 190 has taken the opportunity to climb straight back up. But what's this? Coley's pulling an Immelman and heading straight back into the jaws of a 2 vs 1. And that puts him straight into a head-on with the 190, who I think Coley was hoping to catch in a low energy state after its zoom climb. And after snap rolling out of the way, he sees the Spitfire, not yet diving to attack, but instead on the trail of a friendly Lancaster. So it's Coley's turn to try a helicopter attack. The Spit sees him coming, rolls into a dive looking for a head-on, but aims a bit too high, and Coley comes out of the perilous situation with the kill and a bit of damage. It's only a flesh wound, I'm sure he's had worse. But in the meantime, the 190 had tried to follow him up, and is now low on speed and directly underneath. This is a golden opportunity, and Coley swoops to attack. His first burst is a little short, the 190 starts to evade, Coley still can't pull quite enough lead, and now the 190 is rolling too much, and there's no choice but to break off and zoom climb. Antons are very hard to kill when attacked from behind like that, especially when they roll. 50 cals do most of the damage by fire, but the 190's fuel tank is well protected with armour plating. What you really want to do is catch them with a deflection shot from above, which exposes their wings and also the pilot and fuel tank. So Coley's trying another approach, but this time Watnik has enough energy to turn his plane and force a head-on, and that's the end of that. In his email message, Coley was happy to admit making a simple mistake that cost him his plane, but didn't specify what that mistake was, so in the interest of helping us all to learn, I'll go back over the dogfight and show you what I came up with. Starting from the point where Coley was extending away from the higher Spitfire, and looking back as Watnik did his jack-in-the-box routine with his 190. To me, this Immelman was the wrong move for several reasons. At the end of the turn, he's doing 237 miles per hour, or 380 kilometers an hour, whereas before the turn, he was traveling at 360 miles per hour, which is 580 kilometers per hour. 
That's a loss of 200 km an hour for a gain of only 2,500 feet, well less than a kilometre of altitude, and even though he dives to engage the 190, he doesn't get that speed back, it is gone. This is down to the P-51D's poor energy retention in turning manoeuvres. Whenever this plane pulls high Gs, it bleeds energy fast, and as you can see he reached 9 Gs during this turn. With this plane, as with many other high-speed fighters, you want to avoid unnecessary G-forces, as those big red numbers are telling you that your plane is losing the very thing it relies on to stay competitive, and that's energy. Furthermore, it put Coley straight into a dangerous head-on against Watnix 190, a plane that he'd had a clear energy advantage against. The fact that Watnik is able to force the head-on shows how slim Coley's advantage is after that Immelman, and he's going to lose even more speed by having to snap roll. And that brings me to the Spitfire. From a position of extending away from the spit and possibly being able to regain an altitude advantage, the Immelman brought Coley under the spit, into a position where he could have been double teamed while engaging the 190. Imagine if the Spitfire had dived to attack Coley instead of getting fixated on the Lancaster. And then Coley's forced into this helicopter attack, which turned into a very risky head-on that, against the odds, turned out okay. I say he was forced into it, but really his only other option at that point was diving away and surrendering the fight for control of altitude altogether. So instead of performing that first Immelman, I believe he would have been better off maintaining his speed, extending away from the enemy fighters, and look to engage them separately, not both at once, and at a place and time when he held the advantage. Mustangs do require a lot of patience in War Thunder Arcade. If you try to rush things, more often than not, you'll end up dead. OK, watch what the 190 does here. He's in a rolling shallow dive and then performs a split S to escape. And because it's a diving manoeuvre too, his plane's going to accelerate and have plenty of speed under his belt. Coley lifts into a gentle climb, which is good, but when he sees Wat uh, Watnik turning back toward him, he turns it into another hard Immelman that once again bleeds away all of his speed so he's quite slow by the time he's facing the 190. The faster 190 can attack with another head-on, and because he's slow, Coley has no choice but to accept it, and his snap roll comes too late. I haven't used the diagram yet. Let me do so now, as I think it might be helpful. Here's the situation after the 190 dived away. And this is what it looked like after the 190 performed a shallow horizontal turn to face Coley, and Coley's pulled another energy-sapping Immelman. So what other options did Coley have? Well, here's what I think might have worked better. Continue in the climb, and make the climb shallow enough to keep the plane fast. The 190 won't be able to catch you, he'll use up his WEP trying to do so. Once he starts to struggle, you should then be able to set up another diving attack without the danger of facing his guns. And of course there's no guarantee that you'll shoot the 190 down, as that depends on whether the other pilot will allow his plane to lose too much speed, but it gives you far more control over the engagement than accepting head-ons. OK, let's look at the second battle. This starts after a climbing uh, contest that took Coley and his opponent in a BF-109G2 right up past 8,000 metres, an altitude at which the P-51s do start to outperform the 109s. Indeed, Coley has an, an energy advantage and is closing in, looking to attack Alaric, who at 3 kilometres range realises his danger and tries to turn for a head-on, going into a shallow dive first to gain some speed. After a quick burst, Coley lifts up to, to avoid return fire, and Alaric dodges downwards. Coley's straight into, into a zoom climb and is much more gentle on the elevator this time. Alaric doesn't try to follow, and instead has rolled over into a dive. But Coley didn't appear to have realised that, and as he slowly turns into a dive of his own, I think he was hoping the 190 would chase him and be rope doped but instead Alaric's dived to gain speed, and is now rocketing upwards to meet Coley and threaten another head-on. In the nick of time, Coley realises his danger and dodges away, and now he makes his first mistake in this battle. He's pulled up too sharply with enough G-forces to dim the screen, and that means he's bled some of his energy advantage, but though for now, he still does hold an advantage, and once again he's trying for a rope dope Using the rudder this time, he wants to flip over and drop on Alaric as he passes underneath, but he's going to be stymied by the Mustang's inability to turn quickly in a hammerhead seems to take forever to bring that nose over, and by the time he does so, Alaric is diving away. But this here is good work on Coley's part. He's expecting Alaric to try another climbing attack out of the dive, so he's right on the spot when Alaric pulls up. And a mouse user would have gotten that kill, but Coley's betrayed by his clumsy PS4 controller. He can't hold guns on target, bullets spray everywhere, and the 109 escapes. And here's what Coley himself, himself said about this point in the battle.
I realised that I still held an energy advantage, but not enough to pull another rope-a-dope, so instead I decided to perform a split S to desperately gain enough speed to perform another vertical attack. That was a mistake, and I would love to know what I could have done to better that situation. Well, firstly, let's look at how great his energy advantage is. He's extending comfortably away from the 109 and out climbing it as well. I think his mistake here was getting spooked by that last failed attack and underestimating his advantage. He could easily have stayed calm and continued with the same tactics. After all, they nearly got him the kill just a few seconds ago. So what did he mean by his split S manoeuvre? Well, as I like diagrams so much, I'll use one to show what he was trying to do. Here's our setup, with the P-51 travelling faster than the 109. Coley is going to split S, and it makes sense that the 109 will follow and try to attack him as he passes below. Immediately that shows a flaw in this plan, as Coley is needlessly exposing himself to the 109's gunfire and will have to dodge around, which will make it hard to gain the amount of speed he's looking for. Next he'll look to use the speed he's gained to climb steeply and hopefully get the 109 to stall. And there's a couple of problems with this. Firstly, let me draw a shaky analogy between rope dopes and a lawyer cross-examining a witness. It's said that the lawyer should never ask a question to which they don't already know the answer, as the witness might surprise them and destroy their line of questioning. In the same way, never try to perform a rope dope unless you know for sure that you hold a large enough energy advantage. Otherwise, the enemy might surprise you and shoot you down in flames. Coley is gambling that the 109 won't have enough energy to follow him, and that's all it is. A blind gamble. The other problem is that he's initiated a close quarters dogfight with a 109, a plane that can not only outturn him, but also that's much lighter and therefore can hold its speed in tight manoeuvres far better than a heavy Mustang. This is playing to the 109 strengths and not those of his own plane. So my apologies Coley, I have to play it out, but at least you know why this was a bad idea and that you really had no need to change your strategy. Into the split S. Alaric's diving to attack, and Coley has to dodge. And now the dice is rolled, and he starts his final climb. If it's any consolation, Coley was up against a skilled opponent here who didn't make any mistakes at flying a formidable plane, there was never going to be an easy way to win this duel. By the way, I'll be taking a break from the Analyze This series for a while. I have far too many other vids I need to finish and upload. But that's all for this one. Thank you Coley for the replay, and I look forward to everyone's comments. Until my next vid, good hunting, and I will see you in the skies.